We have um, very recently been going through a marathon of events here in Brussels, uh, all related with gender balance, gender equality, the importance of promoting more women to uh, decision-making uh, positions, because um, to empower women in general and to empower our societies, we need to have more women in power. Um, we realize that even if we are 100 years after the suffragette movement, that was one of the big victories for women, gaining the right to vote for some women in the UK, and that of course led to major changes in our lives. And uh, us, we, I'm Portuguese, um, um, my grandmother's life, my mother's life was very different from mine. So we do have more rights, we do have more opportunities, so there's progress. It's a very exciting moment to be, to, to, to be alive, actually, and to work on these issues, because there's a lot of movement, and um, new technologies uh, are uh, also transforming the way we can all work on these issues, like we're seeing. These webinars would not be possible in the past. The Me Too campaign would not have happened if social media would not allow this top bottom-up um, uh, viral processes to emerge. So we are in a very different context and a different reality of, those, of that of women 100 years ago. So there's a lot of reasons to be optimistic, and I'm very optimistic. Uh, on the other hand, it is true that we still have a lot to do. Um, when we look at uh, politics, uh, women are still less than a third um, of the members of the parliament, in average, of the EU countries. Um, we have next year the elections for the European Parliament, uh, and in 15 mandates of the European Parliament so far, we just had two women elected president, um, Simone Weil, that everybody knows, and Nicole Fontaine, um, no one else. Uh, the, the biggest parties um, are still chaired by male, white male. Uh, so uh, the picture is still quite unbalanced. Uh, when we look at the European Council's pictures, um, it's still a majority of men. Luckily, Mrs. Merkel likes using colorful clothes, so she can <laughs> be seen normally from that uh, ocean of gray and dark blue suits. Uh, but it, it, there's a lot to, to be done at the, mem at the member states level to increase that. So now for the, the European Parliament, there's a lot of work that regards public funding for political parties, for instance, to be conditional to, um, to gender um, uh, balance. So having at, uh, um, at, at least 30% of women in the lists, and not only at the bottom of the list, but at, uh, in electable positions. We realize also that um, there's um, a very big ba a gap in terms of the kind of portfolios that women in politics are given, even if they are elected for, um, for the, the, the ministerial positions. They are given to so-called so soft portfolios, uh, i.e. social security, um, education, all those things that are very important, of course, but then the big ones like uh, home affairs, uh, defense, finance, they are frequently given to the boys. So there's a lot to be done there. Uh, in terms of the business sector, we have seen a lot of progress. So uh, over the last 10 years, uh, women in bo on boards have almost doubled. So that's a, a very interesting pro uh, uh, progress. And that is also due to the fact that this um, case business that Natalie was mentioning, the return on investment, the, 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 the accumulation of almost uh, 15 years of um, Harvard Business School, McKinsey, Mercer, Catalyst, um, Cambridge University, all these very credible uh, institutions uh, showing that women mean business, that women bring more innovation, that women um, create the kind of out-of-the-box thinking that is needed in today's world, that the emotional intelligence that are the skills for which women were socially constructed for millennia, centuries and centuries and centuries, is now extremely important. Even the 
Chinese, um, I was reading recently that even the, uh, the, the founder of Alibaba, one of the biggest um, world companies, uh, has said that emotional intelligence is the a uh, key set of abilities and competences for the coming f for the coming decades because that's an area where machines and algorithms are not going to be replacing anytime soon so these are the qualities that the business sector is recognizing uh, that are fundamental for them and that they cannot waste this kind of talent anymore therefore the progression has been um, is it, it, quite um, it's quite interesting and it's um, it, it's um, it, it shows a good direction just very recently I was with um, a, a big group of CEOs uh, discussing um, these topics um, a lot of men a lot of women um, and uh, they all say that okay uh, there's no more doubts that uh, understanding uh, inclusion is one of the top skills for a leader in the 21st century. Therefore, we realize that um, um, what still needs to be done is to understand that at the level of the top power, um, this, uh, this process needs to arrive too. Uh, we realize, for instance, as CEOs, there's only 5.7% of women um, in the CEO positions in the European Union, and obviously that is not enough. Um, we had um, um, a conversation about the importance of redefining what power is in today's world, because we realized that we are touching um, with the gender equality processes that we, we, we have been um, installing in the different sectors, we have been touching the notion of power itself. What is the power that is needed in today's world. Uh, we have a millennia of, um, of a, a conception, a paradigm of power that is power as domination, power uh, from someone or from a group of people over other people. And um, today we are seeing that with this uh, VUCA world, volatile, unpredictable, complex, ambiguous, uh, interconnected, um, with this fourth industrial revolution where we see that uh, change is happening not within decades but within years, um, we need a new type of paradigm of power. Uh, we need a power that is a power with the others, so it's power that is inclusive, that is collaborative. We need a type of power that brings other people together, because um, by 2030 we're expected to have a world where 75% of the workforce are the millennials, the millennials who are uh, digitalized, who are absolutely different from us. They have different aspirations in terms of their roles in society and in um, the couples and in the family. Because one of the areas that I think is fundamental to touch is that, and we touched in the Jump Forum, the biggest event here in Brussels, um, on gender equality at work very recently is the importance of touching, uh, of uh, uh, working on gender equality not only at the top but also in our private lives. So we have seen that as we have more educated women that want to be in the workforce, we need to redefine the roles um, from the kitchen to our work. If I would like to leave you with a, a very important tip, speak up. Be, be visible, be vocal about the importance, importance of gender equality, have good data, uh, find what, and, 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 and defend quotas, what gets measured gets done, that's the, the hammers we need to have in the different sectors of our society. Don't work and don't do like the boys, be authentic, be a woman, be feminine, be, and be assertive, because we see that this, mixed, this mix of assertiveness with a feminine touch is the winning model. So lead by being who you are.